of the augmented reality uh, technologies as well, you have the option to record video footage of exactly what it is you're doing. So you have the option. Morning. Morning, folks. Morning. Morning, Stuart, Colin, Bruce, John, Graham. Hi, Sandra. Hello, Alison. Hi, Lorraine. Roslyn, Fiona, Gary, Kevin, good morning Kevin, morning Nancy, um, Steve, Arthur, Shazza, Scott, hi Sean, Harry, John, Numbers are climbing nicely. Lynn. Good morning, Mr. McGordon. Anyway, good morning, everybody. That's 11 o'clock. Oh, let's check that's right. All right, 11 o'clock. And the numbers are climbing nicely. It's Indy Truck Davy in the truck. Coming to you today from Wishaw. Um, and the, in South Lanarkshire where it is overcast and it is 20 degrees, it is clammy as hell. But Davy's got the cure, the most refreshing drink ever invented, original Coca-Cola and a glass bottle. Yeah, I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. That's what you get when you get a glass bottle of Coke. Absolutely stunningly refreshing out of the glass bottle. Totally different drink from a eh, when it's in a plastic bottle. Um, and the glass bottles are hard to come by these days, so when you find a wee shop that sells them, sweep the shelf. <sighs> Lovely. 136 on board. We'll get this broadcast underway. We'll start with coronavirus update, and then we'll go into the nonsense that was going on in the press yesterday, all right? Right, coronavirus update. This is the numbers for the 20th, 28th of the 7th, 2021. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached our shores, 2,473,493. There is no figure of how, how many new individual people were tested, so we'll have to go with the 7 million odd number and the fact that 20,000 people were tested yesterday. As far as I can tell, no new people were tested yesterday. It was just repeat uh, tests. Folk who have to test a couple of times a week for their work. Okay. Um, tested positive since the pandemic reached their shores. 341,207, and that was plus 1,179. And hospital, there are 474 COVID patients, that's plus two of which 63 are in the intensive care unit, no change there. Vaccinated, there have been 2,903 uh, 2, people in Scotland have had at least one dose of vaccine, an increase of 2,245 from Tuesday to Wednesday. Of that 4,2903, 3,125,000 have had both Jags. An increase of 16,762 um, from Tuesday to Wednesday, and that has us made it to 70.1% of the population. 70.1% of the population have now had both doses of the JAG or are fully inoculated. Okay. Deaths. I'm sorry to report there's been a further nine deaths from COVID. Um, eh, from Tuesday to Wednesday, and that brings the hospital total or the daily total to 7,911. Community and hospital deaths combined now stand at 10,324. 56 more of our citizens um, eh, have lost their life after testing positive for COVID in the last 28 days. Um, 
Now, is it just me? Or is uh, the infection rate higher than what it was last time we went into a full lockdown? Is the death rate no higher than the last time we went into a full lockdown? I'll need to check the books, but it would appear that they've decided that um, there is an acceptable level of infection and an acceptable level of death. Um, and that just seems to be the way going forward. We'll get a wee bit more of that when we get to the paper review, and we'll get a wee bit more of that when we get into the actual news report, because it would appear, I, I, it doesn't appear, it's a fact, um, a Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are, are being forced to do things that they don't really want to do, because that shower of shite in Westminster holds the first things. And we'll get a wee bit more of that when we get to Mr Sunak's uh, statement yesterday prior to his visit to Scotland today. <laughs> OK. But it would appear there is an acceptable level of death now and an acceptable level of infection. Right, let's move on. Wednesday started with a bit of a mixed bag in the rags. The, more, the, the, uh, more, the most prominent uh, stories where uh, Miss Sturgeon may diverge from the Joint uh, Committee on Vaccination and Immunations advice not to um, vaccinate the 12 to 17 year old age group. Um, uh, and then there was more speculation on uh, the opening uh, up of everything on August the 9th. Uh, on vaccinating the 12 to 17 year olds, well, I say I I don't see why not. Davy says I how no. If the vaccine's there, because if they don't have it stockpiled, remember Public Health England is supplying a vaccine. If Miss Sturgeon wants to step out of line for what Public Health England or the G J C V I want her today, then there is every chance that that lot down that road will just cut the vaccine supply off, and Scotland would then need to use its bar its a budget, its limited budget to try and procure vaccines for the 12 to 17 year olds from elsewhere. Okay. Right, uh, as to the August 9th uh, opening up, uh, the speculation on will it happen or won't it, of course it will happen. There is no choice, I've just said, they had the purse strings. The furlough scheme's winding down, um, uh, and that will be finished by the end of uh, September. So there's only six weeks wriggle room for uh, any form of divergence. So she'd be as well just opening up on plan on the 9th, no matter what's going on. We'll get a wee bit more of that further in as well, right? So, let's move on. Wednesday, the Queen's lawyers ring concessions from the Scottish Government and the Green Energy Bill going through Holyrood. Um, Royal Estates are exempt from a compulsory purchase orders. Royal Estates will be exempt from rules providing common heating as opposed to individual homes burning fossil fuels in the form of individual boilers. The Queen's lawyers lobbied Holyrood because the Queen uh, gets prior citing of proposed legislation. Right. And uh, of course it uh, goes to, um, we all know that, uh, you know, if the Queen doesn't like what's in a bill, then there's no royal assent. So the Queen's lawyers have been lobbying for changes to prevent um, her from having to install central um, a central heating system to cover all the buildings on her estate instead of each building having an individual uh, owner of estates rather than each building having their own um, heating system. The idea is to have a central uh, boiler where you can uh, um, uh, effectively heat everything on the estate if you like. But the Queen's got an exemption because she doesn't want to dig up her estates and put uh, pipes in. Right. And of course, if the Scottish Government hadn't um, conceded to the Queen's wishes, then there would be no royal assent to the bill. So the bill would have had to get straight in the bloody bin. So this is what you call a um, blackmail. And, well, there's nothing else you could call it blackmail. Basically, the Queen blackmailed the, the Scottish Government into giving her exemptions. You give me these exemptions or I won't sign your bloody bill. Huh? The one rule for the plebs... And one rule for a uh, old jelly beanie there. She gets to blackmail the people and the governments by telling them, we'll no pass your bloody bill if you don't give me what I want. Now, if that's no blackmail, I don't know what is. Somebody want to stick it in the comments if there's something else you want to call it.
so much for them keeping their neb out of politics, eh? Right, let's move on to a wee bit of comedy. Wednesday. Alex Cole Hamilton, who has thrown his hat in the ring to be the, the next irrelevant leader of the Fib Dems, tells the Scottish public that, Labour li that a Labour Lib Dem coalition would be a much more progressive option for Scotland than an SNP government. Feel free to have laughy faces in the comments. Alright. Now, I don't know about you people, but I remember the last Lib Dem Labour coalition. I think it was a, um, the last um, a Scottish a government, a, the last government before the SNP took care. Now, if I remember right, the Lib Dems and Labour were no progressive coalition. They only brought forward the, um, the the elderly care bill, but apart from that, nothing. In fact, if I remember right, and somebody can correct me in the comments if I'm no right, is that a uh, did they not hand back 1.5 billion of our money to Westminster because they said they couldn't find nothing to spend it on? We had a dilapidated NHS estate, dilapidated schools estate. We had a need for uh, infrastructure to be uh, completed, like the M74, the, um, the Dalry Bypass, um, we needed a new bridge, early, 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 early fourth. There was a lot of things they could have spent on, real infrastructure, social housing, but according to them, they couldn't think they had to spend $1.5 billion on, so they sent it back down the road. And that's what they call, that's what Alex Cole Hamilton calls a progressive coalition. What we're talking about here is the irrelevant and the zombies getting together, and between them, they still wouldn't get enough to beat the Tories. They were near it. What's Labour going to do? 24, the Tories have got 31. And uh, the Fib Dems have got four. So 28 to 31. Hey, what's Cole Hamilton talking about? Who's getting this idiot airtime? Wow, I'm going to have him even quicker than half wee Wally Rennie. Although I have to say, wee Wally Rennie was mere a comedy for, uh, uh, creature. Um, uh, Cole Hamilton's a snake oil salesman. That's what he is. He's a Tory in yellow ribbons. Spanner. Wow. That's what you call comedy gold for Cole Hamilton yesterday. Oh, that wasn't the clever, David. That's what you call comedy gold for Cole Hamilton yesterday. If this is the way he started, this is going to be easy. David will be ripping the piss out of him every day of the week. <laughs> ah, if that's how he started. Oh, long live Cole Hamilton. Long live the king beneath throne. Mr. Four MSPs and two lying MPs, you couldn't make it up. Right, here we go. Tuesday Tuesday and Wednesday, the spotlight uh, is in the spotlight in this wee section, right? Tuesday, down that road in the, at the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers, we Snyder, Michael Gove, warns Nicola Sturgeon to forget Indy and concentrate on, on the COVID um, pandemic or else. The or else bit was interesting. Mr. Snyder, Govey, um, he says Westminster has no intention of permitting a second independence referendum. They ain't going to allow us nothing, they tell us. We are a subspecies. We are a possession, a belonging. We are subhumans. Our imperial masters have told us we cannot do, we cannot have. Ah, so we Snyder Govey warns Miss Sturgeon. Nay idea what it is he's threatening her with, but he warns her, eh? So they won't permit Scotland a second referendum. Get it up them. Hey, we're not asking them. Right, and if uh, Miss Sturgeon doesn't get her the fact that they keep saying not here and get on with it, her ass will get booted out of Hollywood that fast, she'll land in bloody Broom Hill where her house is before she knows she's left. Anyway, also Wednesday, Michael Gove falls a uh, First Minister Nicola Sturgeon by telling the pro uh, uh, the anti vaxxers and people refusing to get the vaccine that they're acting against the interests of their family, their friends, and their wider communities. What can I say to that, you know? Um, hey, uh, pardon me, everybody's got their opinion on that. 
I have said I've had the vaccine. I would hope everybody else get the vaccine, but I'm not telling you to get the vaccine. That's a personal choice. But anyway, we go over. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. We Snyder. Yeah. We snake in the grass. We backstabber. Yeah. I wouldn't mind meeting him in a dark night in a big, long, dark alley. Absolutely, we Snyder out. Anyway. So we go um, a we go over, you say, threatening, but yeah, I mean, it's always bluff and bluster doesn't go well for us. Anyway, we go with features in the next section, and oh, hey, Wednesday, we go over, he gets his uh, behookie kicked in the, in the courts. Tommy Shepard, SMP MP, had led a team who um, demanded the release of the UK government's pollings by polling on attitudes to the union. Mr. Shepard had started with an FOI request, which was a uh, granted, but we go to his office, refused to release the polls. Um, this then went to um, a, the watchdog, and the watchdog told Govey to horn it her. And Govey and the cabinet office still wouldn't horn the poll on her. So they had to take them to court, and the court told them to hand the poll on her. After all, it was paid for, uh, paid for by the public purse. And they still wouldn't hand the poll on her. So the UK government appealed the um, court's original decision. And Wednesday, the court can tell them, hey, the original decision stands. The public purse paid for this polling. Release the bloody polling. Now, there's a lot of reasons why they don't want to release this polling. For a, site, uh, for a fact, we all know that the, the commercial polls were getting on, on Scottish independence are screwed with, with the questions. But more importantly, I have been told by a very reliable source that in that particular polling down that road, England wants independence too. You get that? The English want independence for the rest of the UK as well. Now that's interesting. And that could well be why they are not releasing that polling. Because let's face it, um, taking back control is what Brexit was all about. If, that, if the next step along the line of that is to get shot of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, then that's exactly what the English people will want to do. And we have to say we encourage it and support it. So we do. But anyway, we go over get his behookie kick in the courts. He's got 28 days to hand this piss out so David can hear the shredders going through here. Oh, uh, it'll be like the paedophile files and the, um, the dodgy contract files. They'll all be missing. They'll not be able to find the information. Oh, dearie, dearie, somebody stuck it through the shredder. So don't hold your breath waiting to see these polls. As I say, I have it in good authority for somebody who works down that road and who's aware of this polling that um, a, <laughs> England wants independence for the rest of the UK. And a, if England wants independence for the rest of the UK, then England shall have independence for the rest of the UK. But that won't suit the elite because it means they lose the power of a... Um, that, uh, that it means they lose the ability to source... Scotland for human resources, electricity, gas, oil, food, water, you name it. Because the minute England becomes independent, they lose access to all this stuff without negotiating a trade deal. And as I keep saying, they'll come crawling up that road with a broken glass looking for a trade deal. The problem is they've spent that much time telling the buggers down that road that they that they, uh, that they that uh, their taxes are subsidising us all, that the dummies down that road actually believe it. That's no, that's no to be, that's unfair to your Anglo-Saxon cousins. The propaganda makes them believe it. Even the politicians believe it. Even though if they were to bother their arse to get into the library at Westminster, the truth's all lying on the shelves. Wow. Anyway, we go, he's got his arse booted. What mere can we say? Always puts a smile on my face when that wee Snyder gets his arse kicked. Right, let's move on and see what else was interesting on Wednesday, shall we? Mm. Um, Wednesday down that road in advance of a visit to Scotland today Chancellor Rishi Sunak said Scotland uh, Scotland's innovation would be vital in the UK's green recovery he also said Scotland had a, a, a had seen the benefits of the union during the pandemic with furlough business support and the vaccine so let's break that down, shall we? Because according to him, the broad shoulders of the Treasury and the UK government 
have been supporting Scotland. So let's go with number one. We'll go with innovation and a green recovery, all right? Now, when he talks about innovation and green recovery, innovation is right. The Scots are quite inventive. Let's face it, the only thing the English have ever invented over the last hundred years is dodgy tax legislation allowing the elite to squirrel their money away in tax havens. And, of course, the worst bloody va vaccine for COVID-19 that uh, there is in the market. They're not very inventive people. The Anglo-Saxons have made a career out of stealing what everybody else does. Everybody else produces what everybody else makes. The Anglo-Saxons, and, uh, you know, I don't know if that applies to modern English people, but let's just say, let's take a wee step back in history and have a look at where they came from. The Anglo-Saxons are just thieves. Rape, policies and thieves. The British Empire was the biggest enterprise in rape, theft, murder and pillage. They raped the whole of the planet for natural resources. They exploited the people. They murdered the people. And eh, they kept them unbalanced by divide and conquer. Sort of shite they're doing here in Scotland now. Alright, so eh, the truth is, when it comes to innovation, well, they do need their innovation because they haven't got any imagination themselves. But when they talk about a... Um, you know, innovation for the green recovery. What he actually means is they need our brains and they need our resources because they've got nothing doing that road. And if the Anglo-Saxons are no stealing to compensate for their own failings, then they fail. Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth I made a bloody career out of it. She, more or less, um, invented pi uh, uh, pirates, you know, and privateering as they called it. History tells us a lot of things about these people, folks. And the fact that they're thieves and vagabonds. I mean, let's face it, the flag that they call their own flag is rented for the Genoans. They to rent the Genoan flag because nobody would let them fly under their own flag, which was depending on what king was in. Um, it was either a, a white rose and a red background or a red rose and a white background. You know. So... That's interesting. All right, now let's go to number two, furlough and business support. He's going to tell us that Scotland couldn't afford furlough and couldn't afford to um, a support our businesses if we were independent. Well, let me wind back to 2013 and let you understand that all the, all the credit rating agencies made it quite clear prior to the last referendum, that's why it wasn't a, a, a heralded much in the press, that Scotland was in a much better financial position than our UK, Scotland's richer than our UK, and Scotland, if it had been independent, would have had its own central bank, could have printed its own bloody money, given its own furlough and its own business support. <coughs> the notion that Scotland couldn't do this is absolutely nuts. Let's have a wee look. Ah, who else might have done this? Uh, Norway, Sweden, yeah, well, Sweden didn't they? left everyone open, Denmark, Ireland, all comparable in size, all have their own currencies, their own central banks, they all manage that. Why wouldn't Scotland manage it? That's right, of course, according to that shower of shite down that road, we are a subspecies. We're not allowed to ask ourselves questions. We're only allowed to question the universe and invent answers so that the privateers doing that road can make money with it. Because that's what the Anglo-Saxons are. They're thieves and vagabonds. Oppressing the Celts and people all over, over the world is how these spanners have managed to keep their elite on the, on the front foot. And the, 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 the nice people of England are that stupid. They keep popping their tugging a forelock to these people. Unbelievable. Unbloody believable. But hey ho, it seems to be bred into them that they need an nanny or something like that, you know. They need somebody at the very top. The vaccines. Right, so furlough and business support. Of course we could have done it as an independent country. We're richer than the bam pots. Let's face it, Scotland's a quarter of the, of the UK economy. We may only be attributed 8.3% because it's her per capita share. But when you have a look at what the UK economy was worth pre-pandemic, 990 billion quid a year, and 220 billion of that came from Scotland, 
And this is what we're talking about trade here. Scotland, the balance of trade surplus. How could we be scant? And that's no counting natural resources. Wow. And anybody up this road that believes this pish is as thick as mints. And I mean that sincerely. Anyway, number three, vaccine rollout. Apparently Scotland couldn't have done the vaccine rollout. Well, guess what? Westminster didn't do the vaccine rollout up here in Scotland. Scotland did it. All they did was procure it. And uh, Scotland being a vast and wealthy country, we could have procured as much vaccine as we wanted. It to be named down that road, we took our resources to back them up. That wouldn't have been able to approach anybody to buy a bloody vaccine. Because let's face it, nobody trusts them to pay their bills. Nobody. They haven't paid debt in God knows how long. Two trillion in debt, 1.9 trillion that we owe to ourselves. There is no debt. The Bank of England is supposed to be 97% owned by the public. Nationalised in 1947. To get the welfare state and everything up and running. So, debt. There is need debt. Austerity, not need. All these people have died for austerity. Was unnecessary genocide. There is a central bank. We print money, we put it into circulation, we use it for whatever. It's recollected in tax. A wee bit out of taps of debt that we're talking about. The bit the tax doesn't cover. So you borrow that for the for the international markets. You to pay that back. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a 400 billion quid. It's buttons. And we interest rates at nothing. But you can print, you print the money. And we owe it to yourself. <coughs> That's like Davy going to the cash point and drawing 20 quid and putting in a book that Davy owes Davy 20 quid. Mental. Couldn't they make it up? Maybe you could. So according to the idiots doing that road, we couldn't have done furlough, we couldn't have done business support, we couldn't have done a vaccine rollout. But apparently, they're depending on us for a, a green recovery. They need more innovation, our brains, our resources. But apparently the rest of it we couldn't have done without their broad shoulders. Never heard so much passion all your life. Talk about a man contradicting himself in the one fucking sentence. Wow. Right. Well, we're on a roll. Let's move on to the next one. Soon acts up this road the new. If you see him and he's in your workplace telling you what broad shoulders the UK have, tell him to suck your left buttock or kiss your ass, in other words. Anyway, let's move on. Wednesday evening rolls round and the UK um, government declares that the double vaccinated people from the EU and US will be allowed into England without quarantine. The Scottish Government is forced to follow suit because most visitors to Scotland fly in via England and use various types of transport to travel on to Scotland and Wales. So Wales will be forced into the same situation again, all right? Now, what's interesting about that is, right, they're going to open the Petri jar up even wider and throw in mere ingredients and see what comes floating to the top. But what's interesting is that the EU27 are no reciprocating and the Yanks are no reciprocating. So uh, they think they're going to make money to the EU citizens coming to Plague Island and the American citizens coming to Plague Island. They're no, because the minute they've been to Plague Island, when they get back to where they came for, come from, they're going to have to quarantine there. Because Plague Island's on everybody's bloody, everybody's bloody red list. And I mean everybody's bloody red list. Unbelievable the stupidity of these people. Crack you up so it would. Eh, eh, fanfare for the idiots doing that road. Hey, hey, UK's open, everybody's going to come and visit us. Anybody with a double jag can come and visit us and they quarantine. Aye, but when they go back home, they've got to quarantine again. So they're not coming anyway, spanners. We've got a travel industry on the Pravda. Celebrating. Ha, huh, we'll see how that goes in three or four weeks' time, spanners. And then, of course, we have the Petri jar. 
just been opened up and mere ingredients thrown in. Eh, there'll be mere blonde mutants like Boris the Fearful Johnson Bojo the Clown firing no all the UK, killing people left, right and centre. Talk about, not just did the U, not just did England and the Oxford, Oxford eh, AstraZeneca vaccine turn out to be the worst one. They're also going to open up and see if they can invent mutant variants that can outsmart the bloody worst vaccine in the whole planet. Wow. Talk about thick as fucking mince. Hey. Let's see if this phone's heating up. We'll put something behind it. Still bit for overheating. A wee heat shield, folks. Um, stick that behind the phone. See if we got a wee heat shield for it. Yeah, that doesn't look like it. Maybe I need to move. I'm going to change the angle here, kids. Oh, no she's. Sorry about that, folks. That thing out the sun, sunlight before it bloody well overheats. So, now you've got the dash cam view. Or should I say, I've got the dash cam view. Anyway, so there you go. Stupidity piled upon stupidity and contradiction on contradiction. So what we had this week, we would go with threatening Nicola Sturgeon and uh, the Scottish people should shut up and get back in their boats. We've got the Chancellor telling us that they rely on Scottish innovation and then to tell us that we couldn't do any of these things ourselves, no matter how inventive we are, because we need the broad shoulders of the UK. And we've got idiot the Fearful Johnson opening up a petri jar to throw more ingredients in to see if they can come up with um, a variant that will beat the AstraZeneca crap vaccine that we're all going to have to go for a booster for. Because guess what? It's a crap vaccine. That's why they're giving the under 40s. And I said this before. The reason they're giving the under 40s Pfizer is because they don't want to damage their tax base in the future. Wow. When it comes to thick... The elite doing that road, or sorry, let's call them the parasites doing that road. They have a monopoly on thick. Absolute monopoly. Ah, oh, what can you say? That's a bloody good question, what can you say? Right, what would we do with a jotter? Or journal, whatever I'm going to call it today. Could do with bloody shot in the curtain. Sunlight coming through there. A wee bit more than 20 degrees now, kids. Right, let's see who we've got, see if anybody wants to join us for the paper review. Um, come on, up you come. Let's get on here. Right, we've got Keith Brown, John McGoran and Quentin. Um... Quentin, we'll give you another go because you've been trying hard. If we don't get you, we'll move on to John and then up to Keith. I would like some ladies to join the conversation if we can. We've only had one lady guest so far. Right, Quentin, you've been sent your uh, invitation. See if you can manage to work it out, mate. Ah, it's an iPad. You've not heard Jotter for years, Avril. Nah. Right, John, you're up next. Right, John. Let's see if you can get in, mate. Hi, James. Another fail. Eh, hey, Keith, you're up next. We don't get you, we'll get, have a pop at getting you. Oh, I had me connecting. Hi, Keith. Right. Hello, I got day. an inch. I'm fine, I'm a girlfriend, Susan Musselborough. I can think of worse places in Musselborough. Uh, I got an interesting bit of paperwork that I'm going to have to put on the internet and let everybody see it about the new uh, fourth uh, power scheme that they're building, the offshore wind farm in the fourth. Uh -huh. I got paperwork 
uh, for, it's for a public consultation about the inner connectors on the other side of Torness, and all that power that we're going to be producing is going down to the thieves down south. Oh, I mean, look at that. That's what soon that like was on about yesterday, be a green innovation. Aye, they, 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 without us, they're stuffed, they've got nothing. That's right, that's what I keep saying, they're crawling up that road, they're broke past They but rely on... In the earlier part of the broadcast, the reason why we go away in the Cabinet Office is they want a free the, the information about our attitudes to the Union. It's not just the the plans to leave, it's the income that wants to leave the Union as well. Yeah. It's a... Uh, the... <clears throat> the consultation thing, uh, the, the Scottish Government were trying to say that they give the go-ahead for this uh, power thing to get built in the fourth, right? Renew renewable energy off the fourth wind farm. That's rubbish because if you look back in the House of Lords, they took that power from the Scottish Government when it comes to renewables. Yeah, but you, do you know when they did that, Keith? Yeah. When did they do it? Uh, I think it was 2013, 14. 2013, and the house you, were the money, you were bang on the money, it was slipped in, and the uh, energy uh, doing that road, when it went for amendment in the Lord, it passed through the Commons without anybody noticing the amendment was put in by the Lord. But they do yeah. that all the time, they do they do everything behind closed doors. Yes, of course they do, they just explained that, they're thieves uh, and the ones, you know. The, the, the thing is, I, I, I know, that uh, somebody had done a wee bit of calculating a, a couple of weeks ago, and they reckon that Scotland has been robbed of £22 trillion since 1707 in today's currency. And £2 trillion alone came from the North Sea oil. Aye, aye no doubt. Okay, anyway, so... Um, so you've got the consultation papers on, and the Scottish Government are claiming they've got the power of renewables, when we know they haven't, it was taken away in 2013. Exactly. So why is the Scottish Government way at line to us? Exactly. Oh, I'm going to put that to my MSP. <laughs> and I would suggest that everybody else does as well. Yeah, right. because, I mean, they can't, another thing is that they can't keep using COVID as an excuse to not start the independence campaign, because as far as I'm concerned, that's here until you get a cure. They, they, they're not making excuses. What they're saying is, let's get rid of the worst of this COVID before we do it. Yeah, now but the, it's like... There's been seven elections since, 2000, since the 2014 referendum. And people are fatigued. They throw the, throw the pandemic and tap it out of voters hey, fatigued. It's going to need a year out. And then, of course, the Scottish government's going to have a look and see what's left of the economy after Brexit. There's a lot of things to be looked at. I mean, to go running into this thing like that and say, oh, I want it yesterday. See, these people say they want it yesterday. But they want to do it without a plan. They want to do a Brexit, didn't they? I know, I know, I know. But the thing is that Mike Russell's supposed to be in charge yet. I mean, I've, I've spoken to some of the independence groups and I've said, well, why aren't they consulting with independence groups and getting everybody on board the now? Because there's no campaign underway. I know, but the, the, it doesn't matter if there's no a campaign. They, sh they could be consulting with all the... Hold on a minute, every step back. Who said they're no consulting with the, with the independence group? And what independence group are you talking about? Well, uh, there's uh, the one in Aberdeen. There's the one across in Fife. I've been doing Zoom meetings so with them all recently. Yes, Aberdeenshire, yes, Ireland, and all these places. That'd be a good Aye. Aye, because I mean, we're trying to... There's forums out there for these groups to contribute to. Yeah, we're trying We're trying to get everybody to come together and stop arguing because of the the Alba party. So you've got now you've got Sturgeonites and Salmonites arguing with each other, and they're still at it. Aye, well, you know, um, that's, that's the whole nature of dividing culture. Aye. I said this last got... year and the year before. I said this before the Scottish election. There was cracks so, uh, forming in the independent movement, and you can bet your ass about going to put levers and get crack the whole thing open. Well, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, if the thing people, is, if people, there's, there's... Out there, you know, let me finish. If people out there are such political pygmies 
that they don't understand this stuff, like Mr. Salmon certainly did, not he? Um, and that's no disrespect to Mr. Salmon, he was supposed to be a political giant. But getting, exactly. into, a fight with, getting into a fight with a successor was a good way of opening pressures. And uh, anybody that thinks this movement hasn't been infiltrated is a fucking idiot. I know, I know, because I've what I've noticed recently is that there's a lot of the Alba supporters are putting. Listen, uh, I'm not having that. Yeah, that, 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 views. The Alba party has said that they're going to stick around and they're going to try and build political black capital. That's enough for me. Yeah, but the thing is that there's some of them. I don't know if it's. Unionists have infiltrated the Alba party because some of the things they're putting up, they're actually coming from English newspapers trying to slate Nicola Sturgeon all the time. And this is coming from Alba party supporters because I've noticed it last week. Listen, it's coming from inside the SNP and all. But the SNP is being infiltrated too. So I'm uh, not hey. about a, I'm no, this is just fed doing the fight between Alba, Alba and, a, a, and the SNP by coming on and blaming each other for this, that, and the next thing, and I'm not having it. Uh, because they've said they're going to stick about, they're going to try and build political capital, that's enough for me. I yeah. think the carry on in the last election was a gimmick. An absolute gimmick. Mr. Salmon thought he could use his celebrity and fast reputation to parachute himself in and a uh, bolster, bolster uh, um, the independence uh, people in the parliament. Anybody with a half, half a say, half an idea of how politics work, knows that it takes decades to build political capital with the people. Yeah, well, they two parties stood aside and let him take over all the work that they had done. Well, listen, this isn't about political parties. This is about the fact that the, the people within the independence movement have been stupid enough to allow the other side to put levers into the cracks that we have formed within ourselves. But, yeah. there's limited teeth, so let's go into the paper review, okay? Yeah. So let's move on to the paper review and let's see what the papers have to say this morning. The Scotsman goes on. Just one in 20 care home complaints uh, investigated in 2020. What do you make of that? Well, that's funny because I've got a, a mate, right, he stays in Musselburgh and he works in a, the maintenance in a private care home that's not run by the Scottish government, right? And he's been offered hush money. I don't know anything about that, because but what I'm going to tell you is that this headline, the one in 20 complaints investigated in 2020, well, you know what, we weren't letting people into care homes to investigate in, so this headline's a ball and it's a lie. Yeah, hey, most of the stuff you see in the newspapers nowadays, it's all anti-Scottish and anti-SNP. You know what, this is, a, this is an essay, the attempt at a Scottish government bad story, Scottish Care Commission bad story, when the very two yeah. things, last year, We've only letting relatives into bloody care homes, never made the investigators. Yeah, there was a, there was a care home in Musselburgh that, that, that went into shutdown, right? And uh, it wasn't allowing anybody to come and see their relatives or anything, right? And they never had any COVID cases at all. That's right. right? COVID cases out. You don't let yeah. anybody in. But the, exactly. the care commission no investigating complaints. The, the care commission had enough in their plates just to make sure that care homes were complying with um, a, a infection control. Yeah. No, never mind individual complaints. We can't say the commission is in the door because, let's face it, it took a home in Sky into, its, uh, 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 into public hands. It took one in Aberdeen into public hands. It's closed in a dozen of them last year because they weren't... Yeah. But, the, but the, the whole headline is they weren't investigating individual complaints. Well, that's because there was no scope for it last year, because of the pandemic. No. The Scotsman's headline is a ball. Now, let's move on. The eye goes on. Travel hope as UK opens borders with EU and US, with the exception of France. Would you make the idea that they're going to throw the doors open to the rest of the world? Don't get me wrong, they never shut up. Well, the thing is, the rest of the world's not going to allow anybody for the UK in anyway because we're getting called Plague Island. You know what I mean? So it's pointless. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, let's move on. The Daily Fail or the Daily Mail. A shot at the end of Scott tourism. That's the opening up again. Well, we've just described the fact that it's no. People might, people might be free to come here, but they have to quarantine when they get back to where they came from. 
So there's still no coming here. Yeah. The only, the only people that we've gotten coming into Scotland is the COVID camper brigade from England. That's it. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've had... I've got friends that... We've all got friends who are travelling to England. They're doing their training that we're the COVID camper brigade at all. It's only three weeks ago, Scotland had the highest uh, um, amount of COVID cases per capita in Europe. So yeah, I know. It's fair to make sure that people are aware that that's a two-way street. Yeah, well, there's been there's been cases uh, like say a couple went into a, a shop up in Edinburgh, went into masks and that, and the security guard turned round and says to him, "No, you have to wear masks." He says, "Oh, but we're English and we're following what Boris Johnson's telling us." He says, "Well, you're in Scotland, I'm afraid, so no mask out." <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I've seen a very similar thing in uh, people yesterday, but I'm not going to get into the details too much. But you outside. People waiting to use a deli, I won't name it. I was one of them, we're all masked up. It says quite clearly on the window, This is Scotland, you must wear face masks because people, people get a lot of people get a lot of visitors from south of the border. And it also said hey, no more than two people at a time in the store. So yeah. we're on an outside, waiting for them to turn again and get our cup of coffee in my language. And three people from south of the border, no mask, were right into the bakery. And the wee woman chased them out. <laughs> yeah, but see, th this all stems from the the English government not telling people, oh, if you go to Scotland, remember, you've got to follow their rules. That's the problem we've got. Well, as far as England's concerned, they don't have to follow the rules. They're imperial masters. They tell us about today. Anyway, let's move uh -huh. on. Um, the Telegraph. U.S. loves to scrap travel ban on Britons. Hey, <laughs> the Davy says, "What's a French go to do with us? A Britons no be Brittany in France." Well, it was the last time I was at school. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, there you go. Anyway, the the the, uh, the, the Telegraph is uh, saying that a uh, Bojo and his team are putting pressures on Biden. To open up the America to UK travellers that have been vaccinated. Uh, it's the arrogance of the buggers. You think there's such a tiny wee dot in the middle of the sea um, in the, the west of Europe has any power to put pressure on Biden as absolute nut. One another, absolute stupid headline. Uh, maybe they'll say, "Oh, if you didn't, if you didn't do what we say, you can take your nuclear weapons back, <laughs> park them somewhere else." <laughs> the the Looney Rag the Express goes on. Welcome back, Britain opens up to his uh, for business. So the Express, like everybody else, is expecting tourists for the rest of the world flying into the UK because we're open. We haven't shut. We've never shut. We never shut. We never shut. We, we never shut. The place was open as a through hub. Yeah, but that's because he, he couldn't, he, like you said, with the India variant that we got, that's because he was too busy trying to make a trade deal with India and he wasn't wanting to upset the president. Right, along the lines, right. Right, let's move on out. That was a winning lag to drag the express. Let's see what the Times has got, because the Times has been very, very sensible of late. And I mean that, the Times has been very sensible of late. And this headline uh, 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 epitomises how good the Times has been. During this madness, right? And the Times say, uh, uh, say nearer the reality of the situation. And it goes away. Fears over health risks from amber pools. Right? And uh, basically, what the, what the Telegraph is saying, uh, the Times is saying, is that actually, quantity of the crap in the uh, bread, fearful of the idea of the black from Amber countries, people being able to fly in if they've been double inoculated to Amber list countries, you know. So the Times is a very, very sensible headline there, you know. And lately the Times has been very, very sensible in the headlines when it comes to COVID. I've seen a, a, a lot of videos put up by RT and that uh, about all the demonstrations. Then in London, there was over a million people demonstrating in the centre of London against the uh, the the law that they just pushed through the Commons about uh, making it mandatory for everybody to get a COVID jab. They didn't make it mandatory for everybody. They made it mandatory, mandatory for healthcare. Yeah. 
but everybody was out demonstrating on the streets, over a million people in London. Yeah, quite right. And uh, the, the best one I've seen was, Davey, where the police were all standing with the helmets and that on, right? And all the, all the protests were standing a line facing them. And the police actually took their helmets off and actually agreed with the demonstrators. That makes, it, makes a change. Um, aye, so uh, even the, even the police, uh, the even, I think even the p police are turning around and saying, "Aye, we totally understand where you're coming from," because they're not even happy with the the things that the government's putting through. Typical. Uh, always get phone calls in the middle of a broadcast. Right, where were we? That was the Times. The Times is the very sensible weather. The National goes on. Release secret union poll. That's the story we covered with Tony Chairman and, you know, taking the government to court to get this information released because it was paid for by the public funds. Right, um, the yeah, but they've got, they've, got, they've, got, they've got seven days where they can actually appeal that as well. It's I think Gove been, will try and appeal it again. It's already been appealed. They can't appeal it again. They yeah, appeal I, I've seen the... the the, the judge had put it through and t told them uh, that now your your appeals failed. <laughs> so if they want to appeal again, they're going to have to go to the Supreme Court. And this is yeah. for the Supreme Court. Because I believe that was a big court. Uh, the sun goes on, pebble wheels. Anybody any idea what that's about? What's that? Pebble wheels. Anybody have any idea what that's about? No, I mean either. No. The Metro goes on, crying out for help. And this is the David Kell Mental Health. I was having a discussion with my brothers about this last night. My older brother got a very interesting. He made a very interesting remark. And the remark was, how does a child know it's got mental health problem? And when somebody tells him it's got mental health problem. It's like eh, when I grew up in the East End of Glasgow, none of us knew we were poor, because we were all poor. You know? Well, I just got a notification yesterday on my phone about a, a, about a lassie that I know, because uh, I'm usually like, say, out every day with my border collie dog walking, I'm about my tune in Dunbar, and uh, the lassie committed suicide. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And that was that was because she had mental health problems and that, and her family was her family was struggling to help her. The point, my brother's point, was when we were kids, Nate had Nate kids had mental health problems because Nate told them they had mental health problems. So no, the, it didn't exist. It didn't exist in The way that society is involved is if a kid a, 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 gets himself into trouble, if a kid plays up, then a, there's going to be an underlying reason for it. It can't just be bad parent or the fact that kids are be shy. There's got to be an underlying yeah. reason for it. And that's where the mental health thing comes in. That's a point my brother was trying to make last night when we were in there having this conversation. My elder brother said, Dave, how do these kids know they've got mental health problems? Uh, if an adult doesn't tell them they've got a mental, mental health problem, how do they know they've got a mental health problem? And he said, and it's, and it's, it's exact line to me was, David, we never knew we were poor. You know? Because yeah. everybody else in the boot was in the same boat and they could help us we were poor. Yeah, well, I never got any inoculations when I went to secondary school because my mum didn't believe in it because if you look at all the the cases of thalidomide when we were bairns because of the injections that were given. Oh, I yeah. can understand that people are frightened. Yeah. Although I have to say, we get rid of the bags. To say, my brother's point was, how do these kids know they've got mental health problems if we didn't invent men with mental health problems for them and tell them about mental health problems, you know? Okay, hey, let's move on to the, the start goes on. This is the last man of the day. This is so good. And the start goes on. Ginger is back at the fringe. Sorry, Ginger's back at the fringe. And he, apparently, Basil, Basil Brush is back at the fringe this year. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love this thing. The star just cheers you up at the end of the news, of course, you know. Yeah. I'm surprised, I'm surprised I've not got to suit you and sweep it either. <laughs> nah, well, you know, <laughs> Brush has always done a dirty show, you know what I mean? Uh, 
Right, well, thanks for joining me for the news review, my friend. Yeah, no bother. And he, um, he, Quentin, John, we'll have another crack at getting news on another day. I'll be broadcasting from home tomorrow, folk. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be 11 o'clock. Because Davey's got oh. something else he needs to do the more other than drive a truck. I'm, I'm going to take uh, pictures of this consultation paper that, that I got for this uh, new wind farm out in the fourth and that. That's right, Davey. And let, uh, yeah, but, and, and, let, and let people see that they're just, they're not happy stealing their oil resources and their taxes and our export money. Now they're after our bloody renewables now. No doubt about it. Now, it might be a good idea to get the link after the government website and all so that we can all take part in the consultation, OK? Well, the consultation paper's got a map and everything. Uh, well, the whole lot. It's, it's, all, it's all there. That will be on the government website, so if you go to the government website and find the link, and post the link yeah. to the pictures of your papers, then everybody will be able to get involved in the consultation. Okay, okay. Right, so yeah, but the, the, consult, the, the thing is, the consultation is just for this side because this is where the interconnectors are coming in. Aye, Keith, they say you need to put that link up because I'm out of time. Davies on a Davies on yeah. you know. Yeah, you need bother. So, uh, thanks for joining me on the news review and letting us know about the consultation for the wind farm on the fourth. Um, uh, Keith, you post the papers. If Davy remembers when he gets in, I'll jump onto the government website, or you jump onto the government website, Keith, and get the link for the consultation so we can all take part. Okay. Yeah, I've not really read it, but I think the link will probably be on the paperwork. That uh, might well be that if you will. Aye. Okay. But, um, Fifty split now, 45 minutes is over. You guys have a nice day, remember. The usual stuff, independent media, support broadcasting Scotland, independent live, indie live radio, Caledon Media, Truth Radio, um, iScope Magazine, National Newspaper, and independent bloggers. And blogger. um, I see a um, Fiona Campbell was on by um, John Drum, the TNT show. Fiona's a lovely one. Hey, anyway. So, as I say, we've got a few shekels, throw them in the pot if these people get fundraisers gone. Keep them going. And remember, back folks. And, um, I know that uh, the social distancing uh, gap changed, but stick to two metres is better for you. Face coverings and close public spaces. Avoid large gatherings. Um, clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two metres social distancing when you're out the route. And get ahead. Have a nice day. Keith, speak to you again, my friend. Catch you up there, folks. Bye. Right.